I'm Nia Malika Henderson, and this is Five Questions. We've got Michael Steele joining us. I think I'm going to ask you more than five questions. I, I, I have hope, a feeling. <laughs> I hope that's okay. So this thing started uh, back on Monday yeah. with, in the eye of Hurricane Isaac, mm -hmm. and your name came up very frequently. I wonder why. Yeah. Uh, as maybe having something to do with the fact that this thing was in Tampa. Right. In hurricane season. I thought that was probably one of the silliest ways to start a, a conversation about a very serious matter, uh, which was, you know, threat to life and property with this hurricane bar barreling into the Gulf region, um, not knowing at that point precisely where it was going to go. Uh, to sit there and to be blamed for it was just outright silly. Um, a, a, but the fact of the matter is, and, and people know this, and this is what I find really the most irritating. Um, is that we took a lot of time and in consideration you had about 30 folks who were part of the the build out of this the the vetting of this process in our site selection committee who then passed on a unanimous recommendation to the full body uh, which again in neither neither of those situations did I have a vote and I'm the presiding officer I'm the chairman so I don't vote unless there's a tie you know unanimous means there's no yeah. tie and then again, a unanimous decision by all of the members in August of 2010 to come here. Uh, so, so that that part of it was a little bit crazy for me because everybody knows how the process worked, and right. it was a unanimous thing, and it wasn't Michael Steele's decision alone. Yeah. In fact, it wasn't my decision at all. Now, was I a supporter and advocate for for Tampa? Absolutely, because this, in my estimation, not much even beyond the the political importance of Florida. Uh, when we did the site selection in the city and, and, and looked around and I saw what the potential could be for a convention here, it was just, hey, no brainer. Right, uh, right. No slight to Utah, no slight to uh, Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. Um, but they put together a package which was great yeah. and I think this has turned out to be a very, very good convention. No, you and by the way, yes. once all the noise start, I did what I had to do. I made a phone call or two. Everything got better. Okay. <laughs> okay. You. You and. Okay. okay. All right. Excellent. Just so we Excellent. put it Just in context, so we, so we all happened. know now what happened when right. the sun came out. It was you. Was it was you. You right. made that phone call. Okay. So you, in some ways, were supposed to be the great black hope of the <laughs> RNC. Is that? I mean, that's fair to say. You wind up here being blamed in some ways, uh, and also you didn't even get an invitation. Right. Like what happened in those intervening years to sort of spoil the party? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm sort of my own guy in a lot of respects, and I mean, I play well with others on the playground uh, but uh, you know my mama raised me to to be uh, very independent of mind and thought and to be true to what I believe and I really believed during my chairmanship that the party needed to take a different direction that it needed to expose itself to the world we'd become isolated and insulated uh, we had become uh, non-communicative with respect to various interest groups if you will uh, more importantly constituencies out there uh, that we should be embracing and being a part of. And I wanted to change that. And uh, to be rather frank about it, there were those who did not like that idea, who resisted that idea, who uh, liked status quo. And I'm not a status quo guy and never have been and probably won't be. So um, we mixed it up a little bit, rubbed some folks the wrong way. That's unfortunate, but that's politics, yeah. you get it. Uh, and then as I look back and assessed I, on my term, I was really asked to do two things at the end of the day, raise money and win elections, particularly coming after 2008 and right. 2006. We raised $198 million in two Not years, expanded the donor base by a million donors, uh, individual small dollar donors, by the way, the folks who give over and over again, not one time. Right. Uh, learned that lesson from Barack Obama. And um, more importantly, uh, won the elections we needed to win, took back the House, grab state legislative uh, legislatures, flip some legislatures in the process, and more, and even more important than that, expanded the breadth of the kind of candidates. So you have Tim Scott and, and Alan West and Susana Martinez, people who are now people, oh my gosh. Right, Brian Sandoval. People folks like didn't know who they were. Yeah. We took a risk. Brian Sandoval's race, for example, we were criticized for putting $80,000 into that campaign in the last two weeks. They would desperately seeking cash so they could yeah. stay on the air. No one in, in D.C. wanted me to do that. Got beat up for it. And if we hadn't done it, he would not be the governor today. Yeah. And, and, and so that's, those are the things, those are the risks we were willing to take. 
and the envelopes we were willing to push in order to win, and we won. Yeah, and that, that diversity very much on display very much on display. this convention. Very much, and very proud of that, too. In any sense, I mean, is all hope lost for the Republican Party when no. it comes to black voters? No. I think Every, there was a poll out that showed 2%, and there was another poll, your uh, network, 0%, zero percent, well, zero black voters. And that was a little bit, I they support right, right. So, <laughs> Mitt Romney, right. okay? You know, they didn't so, poll you, so, They didn't poll me, right. so it's like .0001%, right. percent, okay? <laughs> right. Come on. So we got we got at least one, but uh, no, I think that's a fair point, and, and, and I want to bring us to what we witnessed in Condi Rice's speech. I believe that she opened up a door for a different conversation, uh, an important conversation. Now the question is, is the party ready to go through that door in the pursuit of the black and brown vote, in pursuit of the women's vote, in pursuit of a different kind of conversation than the one we seem to be trapped in that is, and quite frankly, hurting us. Right. With is a Romney, lot of you feel like Romney is having that conversation or not? I think Romney will have that conversation. I think, and you know, maybe this is wishful thinking on my part, maybe it's something else, uh, but uh, that your viewers may want to decide for themselves. Uh, but I really believe Romney's kind of been waiting for this moment to kind of go, okay. Primary off. Right, right. I'm. He's really a moderate, uh, here, really a I, compassionate I'm conservative. Put, I'm not even gonna put it in a, in a moderate conservative because that that gets into a whole that takes us off track. I think what it does, what what he's saying is, because I look went went back and looked at how he governed in Massachusetts, which is what one of my early frustrations was. Talk about that, man. You did some incredible things. You 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 covered that bridge. You were able to to build the bridge between. Uh, your administration and a, a, a leadership in the House and Senate that was against you. And yet you got some good things done. You lowered unemployment in the state. You did some other things um, that were very, very important. So I think he's looking, tonight is that moment where he kind of takes all of that off right. and steps into his presidency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll see, we'll see. Because that's a that. different kind of conversation. And, and, it, and it's not so much about labels, but it is about ideas. It is about vision. And it's about, and I hope he's able to say to people, and I think we'll see this, that you know, this is how you fit into that. This right. is. I, and in some ways, that. you saw Condoleezza Rice and Susanna Martinez yeah. and Mia Love speaking to that big tent Republican Party. Absolutely, and they got it's our future. Huge Otherwise, receptions. turn out the lights. Right. Put I out mean, the foreclosure Not reflected on. on the floor very much. Not many black folks there in the crowd. Not many. Not. I, you were there. Not that's what. Not me. I mean, you have what over close to three thousand delegates there, and, yeah. and alternates. Yeah. And what, two percent? Yeah, I think it is about two percent. So two percent of that number is what? Hey, yeah, exactly. I, I'm it's not, not a, I'm terrible. No, at but math, I'm, but I'm saying it's very small. Right. It's very and small. And so with thirty-six at the last in the last convention, you're talking twenty something. Yeah. Yeah. At this one. That's not progress. Right, That's right. stagnation. Mm -hmm. And it's stupid for a party to engage in stagnation in a country that is changing demographically and like and otherwise. Something a little less serious. I understand you're a Glee fan. I am. Who's your Who's the best singer on Glee? Oh my God! Oh, just you're gonna get me in trouble. Oh man, I don't know. It's I gotta mean, be Merce it's Mercedes, right? Mercedes, uh, Merce Mercedes, I mean, Mercedes just pulls your heart when she yeah, sings. Yeah. She really does. Yeah. I, I would, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I know everyone um, uh, likes, um, you know, everyone likes the Rachel because of the, the sort of the the Broadway the Broadway, stuff. Exactly. But I think I think uh, Mercedes kind of gives you that. That she gives soul. you the Aretha Franklin that and the soul. Motown. Yeah, and, I really, and the I really like her. Yeah. Um, and. Um, I just enjoy the show. It's it's an escape for me. I was in Glee Club and oh yeah, and I just you, have a good time. With yeah. It. What were you, what were your signature songs and can you sing for us now? No, that would not be happening. <laughs> 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 I do I do like uh, the uh, the Madonna episode. Yeah, yeah. No, that was good. The Madonna episode. The Madonna episode with, with was good. Sue, was, Sylvester was, was, and she does the vote. Oh man. Yes. The, the Whitney episode. Did the you Whitney, see the Whitney? I did. Oh, I, did. Gosh, I thought the tribute to Whitney was, was just it was wonderful. So, it was yeah. very soulful, very yeah. good. Uh, they really have a way of capturing uh, through song and, and, and the, the storyline and sort of making it real and kind of relating it and it's, it's, it's a great show. It's a, it's a great escape for me, you know, yeah. after dealing with some pretty interesting folks in politics That's every right. day. Are you going to try to make a guest appearance, a cameo? 
on Glee. On Glee, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. The Michael J. Right, right. Okay. The Maggie okay. Jackson episode or Al Green episode or something. Right. Yes. Right. I, I want to see yeah, you sing. Yeah, I, I, I said we used to sing. We didn't sing well. <laughs>